To anybody watching me, bro, I just want y'all to know that coming from a person that spent nine years of his life in some of the most dangerous prisons in the state of Georgia, whatever things it is that you do that could land you in prison, I just want you to know coming from me that is not worth it, bro. I promise you it's not worth it. No crime, no amount of money, bro, is not worth the, um, it's not worth what you got to go through in the prison. It's not worth the time that they can take away from your life and put you in a dangerous, barbaric environment, bro. None of that stuff is worth it. It's best to just live a regular lifestyle, go to work, whatever, however you live, it's best to just do it legally because when you end up in this prison, there's no promise or no guarantee that you're going to get out when they said you're going to get out. You got some people go in here for uh, shoplifting and they were sentenced to three months and end up losing their life because a broken piece of metal that somebody sharpened, they jugged them with it and, and took their life away. Or you got some people that go in there and do that to somebody and now they went from three months to sentence to life. So I just want to let y'all know, bro. Nothing is worth it no more. The trapping, the robbing, the whatever it is that you do is not worth it. I just wanted to let y'all know that coming from your boy. <laughs>
I said, man, all them damn Chris Brown CDs you got, you roll one up. He told me I left mine in my damn room. So I'm like, man, shut up, man. So I rolled one of them up, sat there, hit it a couple times, passed it to him. And he was like, bro, that's crazy what happened to Savage. Savage is the individual that hung himself in the hole. And I was just like, yeah, 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 that's crazy. And it kind of got quiet. It got silent for a minute. I guess he was thinking about it. I was thinking about it. He's doing something in his phone. And then he was like, they say D's coming up here today. So I'm like, what you mean he coming up here? He was like, they say he's moving in here. So he gave me the phone and I looked at it. And this guy named D that had a lot of pull at the prison with what we were affiliated with. He sent a text message to everybody, just like a security measure, letting everybody know that he's moving dorms today. So if anybody need to contact him, they need to get with him. He just pretty much letting everybody know what uh, where he about to be at. And then he put in the thing at the bottom of the message saying, make sure he got a good room. He sent that separate to Joe Dirt phone. That message wasn't in the group message for everybody else. I was just like, oh, all right, D cool. I guess he cool. Yeah, I don't really know him. He been running things for a couple months, like over the entire compound, but I didn't know him personally. I never been in a dorm with him. I mean, I've seen him a few times out there on the walk. I don't really know how he is personal, like on a personal type level. Did they go by? Later on that day go by, I hear people saying, intake, new intake, new intake. But he was moving from a regular dorm. I guess they told him just wait until um, um, they do the intake move. So it ain't like they doing moves with people property several times a day. They can just knock it all out at one time. Just have your stuff ready already. I don't get up. I'm in there on the bed. I think I was on the phone with old girl when I heard them saying that. I got up. And went and, you know, looked through the door, looked out the door, make sure ain't nothing crazy going on. And then I seen people, I seen a bunch of bags and stuff. You know, I'm squinting because I couldn't damn see that far. I see people with big property bags, so I figured, you know, that was them. So I go lay back down in my bed. I go back on the phone talking to old girl. So so probably about 20 minutes go by. And I know Joe Dirk going to eventually come up here and let me know, you know, brush said come holler at him. Because, you know, he guy with all that pool coming to dawn, he going to. He gonna make everybody, not make you, but he gonna tell somebody, go get all the guys, you know, so I can meet him, tell everybody what's up. Everybody know who he is, everybody know what room he in and stuff like that, and he get familiar with us and stuff like that. So I'm just laying there, man, probably about 20 minutes go by. All I hear is, I hear Joe Dirt say, man, got me fucked up. Y'all got me all the way up. When I hear that, instantly I jump up because in my mind, it got to be a situation. It got to either be a situation with one of them new people that just came in the dorm or it got to be a situation with somebody who just came from outside the dorm and then that kind of made my heart beat fast because it was making me think that situation that Savage had going on could have been done backfired or something like somebody trying to pull up about that or something like that so I jump up ASAP grab the candy bar I go to putting my shoes on the door swing open it was Joe Dirt as he was opening the door he was looking this way talking to somebody and still, you know, said the same thing. He was like, man, y'all got me up. I ain't going for that. And came here and closed the door. He talking about, folks, folks. I'm like, what's up, bro? He talking about this motherfucker, D, is talking about violating me. Man, he got me up. He got me up. I ain't going for that. So I'm like, violating you for what? Gee, he just came in the door. He don't even know you. The hell he violated, trying to violate you for? So while I'm asking him that, my door swing go. It's the dude, D. Now, D is... Um, heavy set, light skin, tatted everywhere. I think he even got tats on the side of his head, but you can't see it because he got like the little haircut. But it's tats on his face, on his neck, on his arms. It's tats everywhere. He swinging the door open. He steps in like walking kind of aggressive. There's about four, five guys right behind him, and like he's walking towards Joe Dirt. So instantly, I, I like push Joe Dirt all the way to the right. I'm like, hold on, folks, hold on now. You just walked in my room, G. You ain't knock on the door. He gonna ask. He cuts me off while I'm talking. It was like, you know who I am? You know who I am? I'm like, yeah, I know who you is, folks. But here's the thing. You a man before you was that. You was a man before you knew anything about that. I was a man before I knew anything about that. So I'm gonna always respect your positioning. I'm gonna always respect your pull, folks. But you're gonna respect me as a man, bro. 
You know the rules just like anybody else, bro. You do not just walk in nobody room and snatch no door open and come walking in here trying to throw your power, your positioning around, folks. You cannot do that, bro. You still got to give me that same respect. You you just came in the dorm, bro. I ain't even came and hollered at you yet. You can't just walk in my room and snatch the door open and I'm already paranoid, folks. You can't do that, bro. He was quiet. He let me talk when I got done talking. He said, you right, G, you right. And he said something that basically means... Uh, excuse me or my bad or something like that but you know I ain't gonna say what it is so he starts telling me that Joe Dirt just tried to start a conflict with a brother brand new brother just came from a whole nother prison and came into this dorm and he just tried to start a conflict with him and that he got to get violent so I'm like bro I've been in this dorm with Joe Dirt this man don't start no conflicts bro he don't start nothing with nobody he don't do nothing with nobody then he like he really stressing because he like I feel like he trying to take advantage of bro Cause bro handicapped, he handicapped and he got to get dealt with about that. Joe Dirt was like, man, when y'all came in here, I went down there to the door and I went over there and everybody that was coming through, I was asking the same question to everybody. Where those GDs at? Where those GDs at? And certain people responded to me and I helped them get their damn bags in their room. But that little midget mother... I asked him the same question. He looked up at me and started fucking grinning and going to tell me, get out my face, white boy. And I told that mother, fuck you, mother. And then he said, oh, you know, I'm GD. I'm GD. And I told that mother, you ain't no mother GD in my book. You ain't no fucking GD in my book, mother. And come find out the little short midget mother really is GD. Mother only two feet tall, folks. So D was like, nah, that's the thing. If this man just told you he a brother, how you still out there spazzing on him and, and talking to him going to tell that man he ain't GD or whatever the case. So I'm like, all right, look, hold on, folks. You feel me? Now, like I said, I'm always respect what you say. I'm going to respect you. You feel me? But, bro, real talk, bro. You got to think. If he just tried to greet bro and help him, and I'm looking at the guys in here standing behind D. I don't see nobody looking handicapped. Nobody new. All these guys, I know they've been in here. I'm like, if Joe Dirt pushes up to help a brother try to get his packages, especially seeing that you said he's handicapped, and then the brother look at him like, <laughs> man, you ain't no GDL. You a white boy. Whatever it is he feels, whatever he said to Joe Dirt. Bro, you can't blame him for saying, you know what I'm saying? You can't blame him for feeling how he felt or whatever the case, you know what I'm saying? Saying what he said back, and you know what I'm saying? And then one of the dudes standing behind D was like, man, fold down that trip. He talking about he trying to hit. He trying to hit. And then Joe Dirt bust in. I was like, man, I ain't finna fight that motherfucker. Oh, handicap. So I'm like, hey, now you need to chill. Now you live. I'm trying to help you here, but you... You're doing too much now. You need to chill out, G. He asks everybody how we all feel. He takes everybody's uh, opinions into consideration. And everybody feel like, everybody that was right there said they don't feel like Joe Dirt was wrong. I mean, he was wrong, but we don't feel like he should get violated. Because, I mean, in a sense, they really both kind of chunked off each other. You know what I'm saying? They both kind of did that to each other so he was all right so you know they flush out the room so he just go to talking to joe dirt on some stuff like bro this the thing when i tell you to come here you need to be pulling up when i told you i need to holler at you you need to come holler at me bro I was saying that's really what pissed him off is because when he told bro man holler at me he said joe dirt was like walking off saying you got me messed up you got me messed up and then that's when he said oh i guess you want to get violated and he was like you know you can't run it straight down here. You can't do that, bro. You can't do that. And then, you know, Joe Dirt was listening to him, and it was real. I told Joe Dirt right in front of him. I was like, bro, you know, you know, you my brother, but at the end of the day, you got the respect position. That's his position. If he's trying to talk to you and, you know, diffuse the situation, talk to him, folks. And Joe Dirt, you know, he was quiet, but he really wasn't trying to hear that situation. So, bro was like, hey, I got that first room down there. I was like, how the hell you get the first room? Because, you know, the first room is the, uh, that's the handicap room. And that's either you handicap or you, uh, you got a real good job. You got a good job at this point and they'll let you get in one of them rooms. So he was like, nah, my roommate, one of the new brothers that came in, he said he handicapped. So the dude that was already in that room, I just threw him a couple dollars for him to move out. 
So he was like, uh, man, y'all all come down there in about an hour. When I leave out of here, I'm going to let the brother know we chop it up, whatever. I'm like, all right, say that. When they flush out the room, I just instantly go to rolling up another Chris Brown CD. Joe Dirt go to pacing back and forth. I look at him. He got his fist barred up, his face red. Fire up the CI. He say, first day in the dorm. First day in the dorm and starting that bullshit. He said, I don't like that Dwayne Johnson rock looking mother. Fighting the CI when he said, went choking on the smoke, damn it, finna cough my damn lungs out. So I had him the thing, I told him, I said, hey, listen, you see how stupid them folks just acted? And then about that little situation, and then you said, the bruh looked at you, and you could tell he was looking at you like that because you white. You bet not, you better make these jokes with just me talking about he look like Dwayne Johnson, The Rock, because. I, I just know how it go, bro. I know people might try to take it and remix it and make it look like a race type of thing. Like you on some racist type stuff or something like that. So like, man, damn, damn. I'm like, all right, I'm just letting you know. About an hour go by, me and Joe Dirt go down there. One of the guys standing outside the door, you know, like security, making sure that nobody else come in. So I guess me and Joe Dirt was the last two to come in. He move out the way. We walk in the room, everybody was in there. Bro, when we walked in that room, Everybody like, you got the uh, the toilet in the sink right here. So you walk in, two locker boxes right here. So you got people on this side of the locker box wrapped around that way. The handicapped guy is right there in the middle all the way in the back. And then you got other people this way. And then me and Joe Dirt just push in, bruh, close the door behind us. And bruh, D, the big dude, D, he was standing up like in the middle of the floor. When I walked in the room, it's like, I, I'm looking straight. So the person that's in that wheelchair caught my attention. It's a dude named Crazy Legs that I kind of got to fighting with before, but not really because we wasn't really just fighting. I choked him out. And, bro, it was a real, 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 real big situation behind him. He almost got a whole war started with the Crips. When I walked in the room and I seen him, I'm looking like, what? This the man that'll sit down here? So I look up at Joe Dirt, Joe Dirt just looking, eyes big as hell, looking like he geeked up or something. D introduced himself to everybody. You know, he was just asking everybody what they name, letting everybody know who each other is and stuff like that. When they got to Crazy Legs, he was like, so what's your name, family? Bro was just looking down for a minute. He in the wheelchair, he's sitting up and he looking down. He was like, hey, family. And then he hit like the little metal part on the wheelchair. And then Crazy Legs looked up, he was like, what's your name? Introduce yourself to everybody. Brad Crazy Lad went looking up at me, turned his head both ways, and he said, I ain't gonna lie to you, fam. I'm gonna keep it real. He's still looking at D. He done stopped looking at me. He said, man, I was in a dorm with this man a long time ago. He said, and, 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 and this man, he is not GD. Everybody go to looking at me. So I know for a fact he got to be talking about Joe Dirt. I know Joe Dirt official, but I know damn well he ain't talking about me. So D said, who? Who Who not? Who you talking about? And the man looked up and pointed straight at me. He said, C. Bill. C. Bill is not GD. I'm like, bro, you got me fed up. I don't know what you got going on. I ain't going to spare you this time. I'll beat that shit your ass. I'm mad now because, bro, now you playing. Now you playing. Now you trying to get people to turn against me. You trying to say some old stupid crazy type stuff. I spared you last time. I, it ain't going to happen like that again this time. So D was like, hold on, CBL, calm down, calm down. Now I'm sitting here thinking, questioning D, because I'm like, bro, you was just super, super duper turned up, finna make a crazy decision against Joe Dirt. Now, you know, we talked to you for a minute, then you was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now you sitting here calm, telling me to calm down. It just makes me question your, your leadership skills. It just makes me question everything. Like, bro, you, you flip floppy already. I ain't even known you, but I I mean, I've known you from seeing you, but it's different from seeing somebody and being in a dorm with somebody. It's just like out here on the streets. It's different from living in a neighborhood with somebody and somebody living in the same house with you. It's two total different people, but the same person. Hopefully, y'all get what I'm saying. So he like, hold on, calm down, calm down. I'm sitting here thinking like, bro, this man just really insulted me. And you sitting here talking about some calm down. So he like, what's the issue? What the issue is? You know what I'm saying? So this man, crazy leg, say, CB was scared to shoot a one. He let me get bust with the candy bar, let the Crips jump on me. Man, that man can't be GD. So, you know, they go to look at me. I'm like, bro, you're capping, bro. You are lying. That never happened, number one. I was never, ever scared to shoot you, no one. I didn't want to fight you, folks, because you're in a wheelchair. You're handicapped. It's not fair. 
He told me, I don't get no about that. He hit the thing real hard, bro. The man is swole, bro. You got to remember, people in the wheelchair that's like got, just got to be there. Now, maybe with a few exceptions, but for this particular individual, bro, his arms like this. Chest popping out like this. I guess he been working because I don't remember this from last time, but this damn shoulders up like that. Like you can't even see his damn neck for real. Shoulder muscles popping out everything. Look like he has some damn muscles on his forehead, right? Where his hairline stop. I don't know. I might be tweaking, but I'm serious. I'm not even trying to be funny. I'm dead serious. I'm looking at him. I say, damn, he done got extra strong. So I'm like, bro, number one, I was never scared to fight you. It is it, it, it's not fair. But since you just sit here trying me, you still on this same boy from this long time ago. But you tried again, you ever swing on me again. You hit me again, but that's on everything I stand on. I'm gonna beat the brakes off your mother. I'm spazzing out, I'm mad now. D told me, he like, hey fam. We're going to cut this short. He talking about the, the whole, like, basically meet and greet thing. He like, man, we're going to cut this short. Let me deal with this situation real quick. The man tell me, hey, CBL, step out real quick. I'm like, step out real quick? Hell, I need to step out for it. This the person that I'm having an issue with, and he's right here in the dorm, right here in this room, then you need to be telling other people to step out so we not – so cluttered and crowded up in here. I need to be in here. He need to be in here. And you need to be in here because your word got the most say so. And we need to be the people in here. But I just go ahead and step out anyway. I wasn't just saying that to him. I was just thinking that. But I step out anyway. I'm standing outside the door. So bro who outside the door, he like, what the hell going on? So I tell him about what was just going on there. So he like, for real? I'm like, man, hell yeah, they got me fucked up, bro. So next thing you know, Joe Dirt goes to coming out the room. He came out kind of fast and looked at me and did like that and went to walk him. So, you know, I go walking behind him. So he slide in his room. He turn around. He go to looking out the window, turn back around to me. He told me, folks, you got your candy bar on you, folks? So I'm like, hell yeah, I got it on me. Why? What's up? He said, I think D's going to try something with you, folks. And he went, like, going under his pillow, grabbing his candy bar. And he said, folks, you know, I'm GD to the bone, Gristle. But I got love for you, C-Bill. And if they try to do anything to you, well, I'm going to pop. This is a members-only video, so if you want to watch the rest, you got to subscribe to the membership. I'm going to pop on their ass. So I'm like, hold on. Now, my heart go to kind of racing. So he just looked out the window. So now I'm looking out the window. I don't see nobody moving from I'm like, hold on now, folks. You said he might try something with me. What the hell makes you think he want to try something with me? What they just said in there? So he said it just seemed like D was eating up everything crazy lad was saying. It seemed like he was going for it. D had a phone, but I guess he hadn't pulled it out yet. And them other guys that was in there, you know, they ain't had no phones. It really was pretty much just me and Joe Dirt holding it down with the phone. So he tell Joe Dirt to go grab his phone real quick, bring it back in there, because they finna call to whatever prison we was at and ask about me and ask about did that happen, did I let that happen to them and all this and this type of stuff. So Joe Dirt hurry up and shout out the room, get back out the room, go walk back over there by bro trying to listen in a little bit. And I'm just sitting back thinking like, the hell you mean that I let that happen to him? Number one, that never happened to him because he's lying. But number two, even if it did happen to them, I ain't the only one that was in there. It was a whole bunch of us in there. So how is it? Even if something did happen to him, it ain't like I just let it happen to him. It's a whole bunch of people that you need to be calling about and trying to hold accountable. But he's lying at the end of the day. Nothing never happened to him. He got knocked out. That's it. That's all. I say probably 10 minutes went by. He called me in the room. I go back in there. Dude, D looking at me crazy. He say, um, you said that never happened. What never happened? What you were saying about this brother right here. I was like, he never got bust with no candy bar. I never was scared to fight him. And he said, all right, hold on. Now he cool and calm. I'm like, man, this nigga had bipolar or something. He just was turned up. Now you just cool and calm. He said, I just talked to the such and such at the last camp, just the person with all the position. He said, and, and, and he told me that bro did get bust by some Crips when the guys was in the dorm. And, and you know, he, he didn't know your name specifically, but when I said it, he asked somebody that was sitting right next to him and he said you was in the dorm when that happened. So I'm just trying to figure this out because he's saying one thing, you saying another, then I just called down there and those people tell me exactly what he said. So it seemed like you lying, folks. So I'm like, listen, bro, number one, I was not the only one in the dorm. It was a lot of us in the dorm. He like, but you're the only one of them that's in this dorm. 
So that's true. That's true what he's saying. So I'm like, all right, cool. Man never got bust. He lying. I say, brother, dude who you just called, I don't even know him. So he couldn't have been down there when I was down there because the guy that was running things when I was down there, that's not his name. So they had to switch positions. There's somebody different who's in position who's just asking somebody else that was there that wasn't in that dorm that heard that he got busted with the candy bar. I said, we finessed that situation because we was trying to keep it from popping with the Crips because this man just pulled out a Crip. He just started a whole situation with the Crips. So the Crip ran up on him, swinging like he's about to bust him. We ended up snatching the candy bar out of his hand, but he still was able to punch Crazy Legs. That sent him unconscious, and he told the Crips, I just bust him. I just bust him in the face. And I hurry up and push Crazy Legs out the dorm, and me and the guys that was amongst each other was able to uh, finesse that situation and make it seem like he really did bust him just to keep us from going to war. He listened to me for a second. He said, do you got contact on any one of them brothers that was in the dorm that can attest to that? So I'm like, yeah, I be talking to one of them, but he ain't got his own line. I could try to hit him on Messenger or something. So he was like, all right, yeah, do that. So I'm like, let me go grab my phone. So he's like, hold on. I'm like, what's up? He was like, nah, you can't leave out the room, folk. I'm, I'm figuring this out. You can't leave out the room. So you got to stay in here. Uh, he like, you can use Joe Dirt phone because I ain't even pulled my phone off my property yet. I'm like, you use Joe Dirt phone? I just told you I got to talk to bro on Messenger. I be talking to him on, on Facebook Messenger. I don't want to log in Joe Dirt phone on my Messenger. And you know, I, I, I didn't think Joe Dirt would play no game, but it's just... You in the dorm now. I don't know what type of games you would try to play. Try to take Joe Dirt phone, go through my message. Don't tell her what the hell you might try to do. He look at Joe Dirt and do that. Joe Dirt shoot out the room, run up there, come back with my phone real quick. So now I got to unlock my phone in front of these folks. But that's why I tell y'all that gang culture is just lame as hell. Stay away from it, bro. Like, come on, man. So I got to unlock my phone. Y'all seeing what my password is right here in front of these folks. Go to my Facebook, these folks seeing all my messages and stuff. And I pull up one of the guys that, you know, I always kept contact with that was in the dorm with us at that moment. Thank God it's the green bubble. He's online. I hit it. I try to FaceTime him. He don't answer. Try to FaceTime again. I mean, video chat him. He don't answer. So he texts and say, hold on, G, on the phone with my dudes. So I text him a certain code letting him know this is an emergency and I need you right now. He went to call on the phone back like 10 seconds later. He answered. He had another count. He ain't got no phone, though. He he buying phone time. So I'm like, what's up, G? What's up? You straight? Everything good? So I say, nah, I mean, I got a situation going on right now. So bro was like, let me talk to him. So bro grabbed the phone. D. D go to introducing himself, telling him who he is and stuff. So bro like, you know what I'm saying? He looking like, damn, what CB done got himself in some shit. So he introduced himself, tell him who he is. He like, look, bro, this is the situation. He run the situation down. Bruh started smiling. He said, man, you talk crazy lad, black hair, in the wheelchair, swollen hair. So bruh said, yeah. He said, man, that man ain't got no damn stab, man. He said, man, that man capped it. Bruh, he got hit in the face with a fist. And we just capped it down like that to kind of make it seem like, you feel me? He was like, man, that man did not get bust. That is not true. That never happened. So he like, all right, say that. So he hung up the phone. So I'm like, yeah, bro, that's coming from a person that was right there in the dorm when this happened. That guy you called, he wasn't in the dorm. He can't tell you what happened, bro. This somebody that was in the dorm. I ain't had no time to call him and prep no conversation. You know for a fact this is the real truth. This is the real deal, right? He looked back at Crazy Leg. Crazy Leg, look at him. He said, hey, G. Hey, G, man, they lying. They lying, bro. At the end of the day, they lying. I know what happened. So while he talking, I cut him off. I said, well, shit, you say you got busted in the face, ain't you? So he's like, yeah, you know what happened? You was standing right there and ain't douche. I'm like, bro, I was trying to help you the whole time, number one. But number two, where the stab wound at, folks? Where the stab wound at? So he's like, bro, at the end of the day, that boy Joe Dirt cut in. He said, no, that, where the, the stab wound's at, folks? Where's the stab wound, folks? You say you got stabbed in your ugly face. Where's the stab wound, folks? So D told Joe, Joe Dirt, man, chill out, chill out, bro. Crazy legs. He's still trying to talk, and now he's raising his voice and unlocking the wheels like he's finna run up on me or something. So I asked D very calmly. I'm like, listen, folks. He said he got bust in the face with a candy bar, and I sat there and let it happen. Why you can't see it on his face? Where? Where? 
He didn't he didn't get bust. D line. Shit, crazy lad. That is it's true though. When you got busted. Man, D said, man, crazy lad say. Hey D, all respect to you, big bro. This is all I'm asking you, bro. I just dropped the whole situation. I just squashed the whole situation, bro. But I just want to shoot a one with CBL, bro. That's all I want to do. I've been wanting to shoot a one with him ever since he ran off on me with my money. He said, bro, that's all I want to do. Let me shoot a one with CBL. We'll just kill the whole situation. Hell, CBL, we could be cool. We could eat a pocket. We could make a meal after this, bro. But I definitely want to shoot a one with you, bro. So D looks at me grinning. So I'm like, man, I don't want to fight this man, bro. He like, hey, you can't turn it down, though, bro. The man saying he want to fight you, and he just going to kill the whole situation. I'm like, but what about us? What about you just catching him in a lie? You thought you caught me in a lie, and you damn near was ready to do something to me. What about you just caught him lying 100% facts, and you're not saying nothing about that? You trying to tell me to shoot a one with him? And you my brother, though, right? Like, what's going on here, bro? He was like, this is my first day in the dawn, folks. I'm really getting a headache. I'm really tired of this. I'm tired of dealing with this. He saying he want to shoot a one. You saying you don't want to shoot a one. So, bro, y'all going to have to y'all gonna have to come to common ground somewhere here because we ain't finna keep dealing with this. Once y'all leave out my room tonight, I don't want to hear about it again. I do not want to hear about it again, bro. So, I think you just need to shoot him as one. So, all the other guys in the dawn are saying, yeah, for sure. I think I think so, CBL. Just go on and get it over with. I'm like, bro, this man is in a wheelchair, bro. So, bro, like, man, that don't mean nothing. That don't mean nothing. Crazy lad, son. One of the dudes like, hold on. We're going to make it fair. We're going to make it fair. He leave out the room. Come back in there with a chair. Then he got out the TV room somewhere. Sometimes they be having chairs out there. And he going to say, CB, you just sit down in this, bro. So it ain't got to be. But, you know, I'm looking at it overall. I'm looking at the bigger picture. I'm like, bro, this your first time in the, this your first day in this dorm. This is the example you're making. You trying to make me fight a man in a wheelchair. And, like, I just knew he was unstable. Like, he's really not stable enough mentally to be a leader, bro. To be talking about he's leading stuff. Like, I don't trust your leadership. I don't trust your judgment. You know what I'm saying? It just had me very perplexed at that very moment. I'm like, bro, I'm not about to do that, bro. I'm not about to do that. So the dude D say, bro, you going to shoot him on one or you going to take a violation, bro? It is what it is. It's a grown man. He trying to see about you one-on-one. -on -one. And I'm like, bro, everything I done did to show my demonstration to this organization, everything I have done, as many as times I have risked my life and placed my life on the line for this, there is no way you can kick it to me on no stuff like, I don't know what you really built like, or you acting like you don't want to shoot him a one. He's in a wheelchair, bro. He's still going for it. So I just got mad. I was just like, man. I just sat down real quick in the chair. I turned the chair this way, sort of my feet facing straight. And I was like, all right, come on with it. Come on with it, bro. I'm tired. I'm tired of y'all pissing me off. Come on with it, bro. And, bro, them folk moved out the way. And that's just how I knew, like, bro, y'all is entertaining this, like. And, man, that dude, Crazy Legs, went to rolling over there, bro. And that man rolled all the way up on me with his feet, like, kind of went in between mine, getting close. And that man swung, bro, not weaved it, came around to the right. <clears throat> hit him on the side of the face. We was just going at it. He was getting some in, but the thing is, even though we both sitting down, I'm clearly I'm clearly taller than him standing up because his, his reach ain't as long as mine. So while we sitting here going at it, hit Joe Dirt talking about Beat his ass, folks. Beat his ass, folks. Beat that swole motherfucker's ass, folks. So bruh ends up grabbing me by the shirt and like pulling me, trying to pull me like closer, but he did it so quick when he got me, he pulled me in, bro. He hit me. He hit me very hard, bro. He caught me real hard with one up here. I'm trying to pull back. You know, I'm swinging like over trying to pull back down there. Kind of can't see out this side a little bit. Like I just charged up some type of way, bro. I just, I just went into super Saiyan mode or something. I think in the back of my mind, I was mad about the whole situation, but then I was looking at his situation like, bro, there's no way you finna whoop my ass. And then I just went to going way, 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 way harder, bro. I'm talking about going. I was throwing them things so fast in all kind of ways. And I'm just bouncing around the chair, moving with it. And he eventually, like, he went back one time. And then when he sat back up, I'm like, come on, come on. And then he went to rolling his wheels back and was like, I'm straight. And she, he said he was straight. I got up. I walked out of the room. Joe Dirk came walking right behind me, went up there to the room. Two of them guys from in there came up there. They're like, you straight, G? I'm like, yeah, 
fat ass knot right here. I think my bottom lip was kind of swollen too. I'm like, yeah, I'm good. I'm up there rolling up a Chris Brown CD. So they go to laughing, talk about how funny it was. And they really talking about how I was just doing it. Like, but you really OD, boy, you just went in on it. Then him and Joe Dirk talking, Joe Dirk talking about that little motherfucker ain't but this big. Motherfucker can't even walk and gonna have a nerve to be trying to fight somebody. <laughs> that motherfucker's crazy, man. And you know, I'm just sitting there thinking about it, bro. I'm just looking at everything together like, damn, bro, y'all my guys, y'all my bros. Like, why I just had to do that, bro? You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't like, I don't like stuff like that, bro. And that's why I just stress, leave that type of stuff alone. It's not, it's not what you think. Them people is not who you think they is. Them people don't love you. Them people don't give a damn about you. It makes you just not want to get in business with people, bro. People in this world is crazy, bro. Listen, they are crazy. You never know how somebody feel about a situation. This was years ago, bro. This man never got bust. This man was lying. He wanted to see something done to me so bad, he was just willing to lie. He thought he could whoop me so bad because of the muscles. But what he didn't understand was whether I'm sitting up or not, there's still lower body strength that's coming up here. Some of these hits that I'm swinging and hitting you with is still coming from my feet being planted on the ground. So you can't whoop my ass either way it go, bro. But the man wanted to see something done to me so bad, he held on to that grudge for so long. It just makes you cautious in general when it comes to people, bro. It's just sad, bro. Y'all stay out of them type of situations. Stay out the streets. Stay away from gangs. Stay away from all of that, bro. It's your boy Bill. I'm out of here. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I like this one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What the fees? What the fees? What the fees? What the fees?